my name is Caleb Monroe. I write Ice Age, mm -hmm. and I also write Dude and Mrs. Peel, which is slightly less ageous. That's a grown-up It's up most book. ages. It probably, it is most ages. A kid could yes. read it, but they'd be like, this is <laughs> weird and British. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Um, so we're going to uh, start by just kind of going through um, and showing you guys a little bit of everybody's work um, and kind of give you, we, we kind of want to, you know, show the range of all ages titles that we publish at Boom, or at Kaboom, and uh, there, there might be some live comics reading, which is always a, a good time. Um, so I'm going to start, uh, we're going we're gonna to start with, with Mr. Mike Dunkel and talk about Hero Bear, who is great. Uh, when I was a teen last reading independent comics, um, I was crazy about Hero Bear, so really, really fun and exciting to be Mike's editor. It's a little, like, you know, I don't know, uh, being... Being, become the master. Yeah, a little bit. It, it's, it's, it's been really, really cool. So, um... I think he's glad because she can tell him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> As if. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd just love to hear a little bit from you, Mike, just kind of, you know, where Hero Bear came from, what experiences kind of influenced uh, his creation and, and uh, you know, just a, a little bit about your inspirations, I guess. Um, Hero Bear, along with, I think, a lot of all ages books, uh, stems from something that's connected to childhood. It's connected to the things that matter to us. Um, for me, Hero Bear, see, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hero Bear stemmed from a lot of me and my kids. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of pulling from my childhood growing up, but also my kids growing up as well. And um, I've always believed that that's what all ages is, mm -hmm. is it's truly all ages. Mm -hmm. It's not just for kids. You know, what we write for is those family events where mm -hmm. a parent reads it with their son or daughter. You read it with your niece or nephew. You read it with your grandparents. But it's always with. It's always together. It's sharing. So the idea that all ages or that kids don't read comics or that it's just for kids, I don't believe that's true because what we're trying to create and what I've tried to create with Hero Bear is a shared experience, something that, that you enjoy that is reminiscent of childhood and nostalgic and brings forth that shared event as well. Um, so for me, that was where Hero Bear came from, was trying to recreate, uh, also in the tone of like a Wonder Years or Stand By Me, a very nostalgic feeling and adventure through it all. And I think, I think that's where Hero Bear shines the greatest is, is you, when you read it, you literally, I mean, you feel, you have this feeling that washes over you that's, you know, like you like you're hanging out with the best friend that you have in your memory, and uh, so uh, I don't know. I, I I think it's I think it's really great, and I think you guys are gonna you guys are gonna love the uh, the new stuff that we have coming out. Uh, so I brought a couple of strips. If Mike would grace us, <laughs> so I offered I, I can I can read these for you if you want, but uh, I'll let you read the first. One. Okay, all right. So. Uh, you can see, Hero Bear and the kid are hanging out. Um, I'm worried. About what? What if I grow up and lose the ability to see the clouds? Ah, it'll never happen. But grown-ups don't even look up most of the time. Sometimes the weight of the world can keep someone's head down. So it's not really if you can, can or cannot see them. It's if you stop trying to see them. Yep. And maybe the secret is to never miss a chance to get a closer look. I completely agree. And then here, Bear and the kid, they go for, they go for a little flight. And then the whole Jeez. crowd went, aw. Woo! <laughs> oh. uh, and I also, uh, I brought the strip that, uh, that Mike did to announce uh, he was joining the Boom, the Boom family which I really, really, really like. <laughs> it's on my bulletin board in my office. So. Am I reading this one? You can you're, if you wish. You're up for this one, Mike. <laughs> there you are. Hero Bear, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> Drinking hot cocoa with Katie. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. Well, while you were being lazy, I was busy creating a comic book about us. Ooh, does it have mini marshmallows? No, but I did draw us fighting giant evil robots. I even wrote Boom on it. I want this book to explode to the top. 
You want it to blow up? No, silly. Who makes everything better? It's gonna be huge, big. Okay, but speaking of huge, what's up with my nose? It looks like a bowling ball is glued to my face. Hmm. Yeah, I could save a ton on art supplies if I shrink your schnoz a little bit. Well, I'll fix it in the second print. I gotta go practice my autograph. See you later, and remember, boom, baby, boom. You know, he is right. It does make everything better. Yep, boom. Awesome. All right, well. I'm so suggestible, I want marshmallows now. <laughs> Well, I, I, when I was um, finishing putting together this this morning, that's what got hot cocoa when I came in. And I was like, everybody's having marshmallows. That's morning, kind of always in the cocoa. background of my brain. <laughs> marshmallows, 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 marshmallows. Oh. Now it's in the forefront. Now that's so what you will crave. It's where I'm going right after this is to get some hot cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Nat's series, Fiona and Cake, um, which is a lovely little series about a girl and her cat. <laughs> um, so if any of you came to the Adventure Time panel on Friday, we, you know, we talked a little bit about um, Fiona and Cake, and uh, I just uh, figured, you know, we could talk a little bit about Fiona and Cake's genesis and where, you know, they kind of came from as far as oh. your inspiration for that. <laughs> drew for a forum for a while and they would ask kittens and then eventually like gender bending came up mm -hmm. and I drew them and they were super cute and I just wanted to keep drawing them and I put them in little things and I did a comic with them and then Federator was super into them <laughs> and they emailed Penn about it uh, and eventually they decided to make an episode uh, about it which was amazing because Rebecca Sugar did it. <laughs> Rebecca Sugar is the best person uh, in the world. And that did really well. And um, I wanted to keep making comics about him. And then when I heard Drew might do one, I asked Penn to ask Drew. <laughs> and uh, she yeah, I got an email from yeah. him. She asked to try out. And I was like, yeah. you don't have to do that. <laughs> You don't have to try out. You created these these lovely little characters, and they've. Uh, I love um, how they've got such distinct personalities, separate from kind of the gender bending aspect of it. Uh, you've really done a fabulous job, kind of giving them their own little world outside of you know that the Adventure Time model that they kind of came from. So, uh, I love that. <laughs> I just wanted like I wanted it to be Sailor Moon. That's all I wanted. Yes. To do, so. I, we actually, um, another another girl in the office and I talk a lot about like the magical girl genre and like how they're they're really the the reason that Fiona and Cake elicits this response is that there's kind of this hole in the, in the lady comic market right now where there's not that magical girl thing and this is like this is that yeah. and I think that's I think that's so cool. <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm going to show you some never before seen Fiona and Cake pages now. If you these are these are uh, pre these are before the uh, the pages that I showed at the Adventure Time panel on Friday. These are uh, predate those by a couple of pages. So um, I'm going to read them because um, it's probably going to be easier on my screen. Um, and uh, hopefully I don't do too bad a job. So what happened was in th the end of last issue uh, Fiona and Cake rescued this little flame booger, as he's referred to, <laughs> and uh, they took him back to their, their tree, and suddenly Marshall Lee just barrels in, breaks, breaks a hole in the, in the tree, and he's all, he's all burned up because he's been rushing in, in the sun, and... <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! <gasps> I don't know what happened. I didn't touch anything. Oh. Okay, great. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to stand back. Um, and uh, Cake is kind of like, oh, you. You're here. And so this issue picks up where that issue left off. And, and Marshall Lee, oh, Cake, 
You're not still mad at me, are you? And Cake's like, put me down. Put me down. Do you mind if I close these curtains? Don't touch my curtains. Hmm. Shook. Humph. <laughs> Fiona. Hey, I heard a crash. Is everything all right? Also, the toilet's clock. And then Marshall Lee. Fiona! Fiona. Oh, oh, Marshall Lee. I need your help. Boys' night went horribly wrong. <laughs> and Cake. Get out of here. Marshall Lee squishes Cake away. Cake, please. You guys did boys' night without me? <laughs> Fiona, Gumball's in trouble. He's stuck in a dungeon, and you're the only one that can save him. And then they stare at each other. And Fiona gets little sweat marks. Yeah. And everybody goes, <gasps> And then Fiona says, Cake, I'm going to go help them. And Cake says, No! <laughs> Fiona, come with me, Cakey. Fine. <laughs> Now cake's big, and they're tombing through the, the kingdom. Tomb, tomb, tomb. What are you sitting in? Oh, this is my baby sling. Hey, Pace Face, where are we going? A am I Pace Face? The, the entrance is in the Candy Kingdom. Gumball had a hole blasted into the ground to get into the dungeon. <laughs> Y'all sillies need to stop blasting holes everywhere. Cake doesn't really like me, does she? Fiona says, I like you. <laughs> What do you like about me? Your pace face. <laughs> and then they tomb forward. And uh, there's, there's a dungeon and there's a, magical, there's a magical oven. You guys are gonna really love it. It's gonna be super great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so next we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about Ice Age. Uh, talk to you. <laughs> I know, it's... <laughs> it's the, we sat guys, in the wrong order. We can't follow directions. Order. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so this Ice Age book um, has been a lot of fun. It was, uh, one of, it was the first All Ages book that uh, I ended up working on after I got promoted to an editor uh, a year, so, year two ago. And uh, I'm like training wheels. <laughs> and Caleb has uh, has been working with us on stuff for a really long time and is a dear friend and a great writer. And, oh, jeez. I don't know what keeps happening. I'm really sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, great. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, Caleb, I just wanted, you know, you, you write for both Ice Age, and now also you're writing some stories for our Peanuts uh, strips, which is really, really cool. Ooh, that's, um, that, by the way, is a world-exclusive announcement. There I you think. go. It's an announcement. <laughs> um, um, that I'll be doing Peanuts. Uh-oh. <laughs> you said too much. Marketing's going to kill me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and something that I feel like you're really gifted at is um, kind of getting into characters' heads and getting their voices, like, spot on. And I was just kind of wondering what your writing process is uh, for doing Ooh, that. My writing process. <laughs> um, it all begins with not growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, what I really what I do is I I I like to prep before I get into a script. So I'll just watch ten minutes of an Ice Age, or in the case of Peanuts, I'll just read ten pages of Peanuts comics or something. It just get into that rhythm a little bit, and then I kind of just look like a crazy person as I write, because I will write the dialogue and then say it out loud to myself over and over and over again until it sounds right. And sometimes that goes quickly, and <laughs> sometimes it takes all day to get that one scene. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, who, uh, who's your favorite uh, character to write, generally? Oh man, that's a tough one. And why? <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you two answers, because one of them doesn't talk. Uh -huh. um, one of my favorite characters to write is Scrat, the <laughs> saber toothed squirrel, because even though it's an all ages book, essentially I get to write a tragedy every issue <laughs> because Scrat never gets the acorn, um, and there's not a lot of tragedy in comics. That's <laughs> you, you you know I mean people die and then they come back, and uh, there's not a lot of tragedy in kids movies. Um, and in all ages material. Um, so it's actually, 
really fun. It's actually really hard also to try to figure out how he, what could possibly keep him from getting an acorn. Well, and what's so month. funny is like <laughs> if he gets if he gets too close, we will we'll get notes from Fox. They're like, ah, he gets a little too close. Like he seems <laughs> he a little yeah, too he, happy. Yeah. He can't even get that close to getting <laughs> his acorn. So that's that's really fun just because it's completely different than anything else. Um, and then other than that, my favorites are probably the um, possums, Crash and Eddie, just because they are. They're the living embodiments of mischief. Um, <laughs> and I feel like I identify with that. Awesome. Well, this issue uh, features a Crash and Eddie adventure. So do you mind reading a couple of pages? In Not at all. Uh, Dramatic reading. All right. Here we go. Catch you guys later. Blink. Blink. <laughs> Diego. 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 Yes. <sighs> One. <laughs> Catch. <laughs> <laughs> look what we found. Is that a trick question? No, look. I'm looking. It looks like bark. Whoops, it's a treasure map. We're going to find a treasure. That's so? And you got this map how? We tricked a Gastornis into giving it to us. He didn't want it anyway, on account of the curse and the ghost bear. <laughs> ghost bear. Oh, you're way tougher than he is. We'll give you a cut, a share of the booty. Plus, Manny left you in charge while he was gone. Yeah, charge, full speed ahead. <laughs> map says it's this way. I just know I'm going to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> so they got on a pretty swell adventure after that. <laughs> um, and uh, last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Braves Warriors, uh, and then uh, we're going to we're going to talk about we're going to talk about all ages comics in general, and uh, hopefully answer some questions and, and have a conversation because it's kind of nice little mixed group so hopefully you guys are very curious <laughs> um, so a uh, little little context uh, for this this page uh, we, we are at an alien beauty pageant we open at an alien beauty pageant and uh, bravest warrior Beth Tatsuka is being asked uh, some stupid beauty pageant questions that she refuses to answer and uh, suddenly she whips out uh, a cartoonishly large bazooka and asks, where are the brains? And it turns out that the people running this beauty pageant have been stealing brains. Um, and the Bravest Warriors are here to help. And uh, so Plum and uh, Beth are undercover. And they're causing all kinds of havoc. And uh, somebody makes the comment that perhaps these are, not, these are not good influences. These beauty pageants aren't good influences on the kids at home. So now we cut to the kids at home, essentially. And uh, you're gonna do it, and then you're gonna answer some questions, brother. Cool. Hope you're ready. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I just want to say I, I think I'm the only one up here who doesn't write. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's. Uh, just, th these words are Joey Camos, who's amazing and insane. And we're uh, gonna we're gonna talk. I wanted uh, you guys to kind of see his words because we are gonna talk about what it's like to write or to draw Joey's beautiful, beautiful oh, words. Oh man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> All I'm saying, dearest, is that maybe we shouldn't allow her to watch these Miss Teen Universe pageants. Mm-hmm. I just worry that it puts strange ideas in her head about what's important in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to say about your own daughter's social influences? That's all you ever say to me anymore? What happened to us, Bonnie? We used to be Bazooka <laughs> Beth Bazooka! <laughs> Then we cut back to the beauty pageant. I can kiss who I want. You're not my mom. <laughs> everybody, everybody. I invented a machine for determining who is the real version of each of us. It's very scientific. I invented it. <laughs> we just need to take a careful reading. Mop. <laughs> what the? I don't understand. That invention should have worked. I put the circle glowy things on top of the mop and everything. And that's scientific, right? Uh, Danny, are you? Feeling okay? I'm an inventor! <laughs> Stop mopping people! I can invent us a whole bunch of things. Watch, you just watch. I invented this animal that is half bug and half zebra. Hello? <laughs> Danny, you didn't invent cat bug. Or dirt! Or dirt inverter bird! I'm an inverter! My name is cat bug. I'm a zebra! Danny's brain, it's been stolen. 
Sometimes I eat things. Sometimes you eat too many things. <laughs> So uh, Mr. Mike Holmes is the amazingly talented artist on this crazy series, and he works with Joey Camo, who, like Mike said, is a little bit crazy. His scripts are a mile a minute, like nuts. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, Mike, obviously you do a lot of your own stuff. You do an incredible uh, strip called True Story. Uh, you do a lot of amazing uh, comics on the web. And, uh, you know, how is, uh, how is working with a writer different than drawing your own stuff? It's easier. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no. um, hey yo. Yeah, I, like, it, for the most part, um, like with, with True Story, um, you know, it's still content that's generated by other mm -hmm. people. Um, I'd really like to, to write my own stuff, but working with Joey is really terrific because I think, like, my own sensibilities tend to run a little mm -hmm. insane, and, like, yeah. I really like to kind of play those play really big moments mm -hmm. um you know like things are there's you know like, there's a peak where like the story's going like that to that to that and you go like way <laughs> up for like a second um and joey's really really good at that where he yeah. like he can really build the seed and all of a sudden like boom like something's just the most something crazy, crazy thing. happens yeah like I, I think he writes stream of consciousness a little bit oh where yeah it's just literally like but the great thing about him is like he brings it all around mm -hmm. like at the end of the first arc where you're like, I don't know how he's gonna wrap yeah. this up. And then I read the script and I'm like, that's actually pretty smart. <laughs> like he, wow, you pulled it off. Right? <laughs> good, good, good work, buddy. Yeah. Um, it's funny because Joey comes from writing, you know, a kind of darkly humorous uh, uh, strip called Softer World. And his sensibility for that, for that turnaround, that last minute, like kind of like, whoop, was yeah. what made me choose him for Bravest Warriors. And, uh, Sometimes I'll get a script and there will be a moment like that where I'll be like, oh gosh, oh gosh, I don't know how this is going to look. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. And I'll send it to Mike and I'll be like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> I really hope. And then Mike turns it into something huge and perfect and uh, exactly what it needs to be, kind of bombastic. Do you, do you just like expect me to, to say no? Like, no, no, I no. Can't no. Do I, I, will, I will say no when it's extreme, but there are times when I will be like, oh gosh, oh God, well, okay. Well, I think uh, that's like actually that's a that's kind of a uh, good point, and like <laughs> the the whole all ages thing mm -hmm. is that um, all ages shouldn't mean safe, yep. um, or or you know docile mm -hmm. or or you know just the bland. Mm -hmm. I think all ages, like with any good thing, should take risks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing like violent or oh, gory sure. or like you know. <laughs> Horrifying, We're not in the business of scarring people. No, no, but I think like it's kind of cool to be reading something and then all of a sudden go like, oh, ooh, that yeah, was a little, is, ooh. This is a little yeah. crazy. Um, and I, you know, and that kind of leads us, I guess, into the next segment of our, our panel here. Um, it's just kind of all ages comics in general and, uh, you know, what makes a strong all ages comic and, uh, you know, kind of everybody's general philosophy in doing their comics. Um, you know, like you said, I, I think sometimes the best stuff, the best all ages stuff is the stuff that really, uh, you know, like a, a Studio Ghibli film is not a safe or, no. you know. It, it crosses generations. It crosses like generations. It truly is what it's called. It's all exactly. ages. Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and it really does, you know, like you said, it, it, it takes risks and it doesn't talk down to anybody. Um, and I think that is truly the strength, you know. Of, of a good all ages, uh, you know, piece of art is that it doesn't it doesn't talk down to anyone. I don't know if you have a comment. But, uh, you look like you no, I, I agree. In fact, a lot of times in conversation with people, I will say every ages, mm -hmm. bec just because it causes people to pause for a second. Because a lot of people in their mind have pigeonholed all ages as for kids only, mm -hmm. which is not what it says. Or else it would just say young ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it would say those meddling kids on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, my grandmother is uh, a really cool lady. Uh, when she was a little girl, she used to read Batman and Superman comics, and I was like, oh, if you'd saved them, we'd all be living in a mansion right now. But she loves that I work in, in comics, and her favorite, I think, book of the last year was uh, Roger Langridge's Snarked. Um, and she was just crazy about Snarked. Um, 
you know, I would, I would probably put her on the comps list, essentially, so she would be getting snarked every month. And uh, she wrote Roger a, a, a message, like a letter, and emailed or and, uh, mailed it to him, and you know she just loved it. And I and I loved that you know we had this book. Um, Snarked is kind of a, a play on Alice in Wonderland, and it uh, it won an Eisner last year, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, I just loved that here was a book that was that was truly all ages. I knew kids that loved it, and here was this woman who's about to turn 80 <laughs> and just can't get enough of Snarked, you know, and is writing me letters talking about the state, you know, what, what, what scrape uh, the walrus and the carpenter were getting in that month, and I thought that was really, really special. Um, how do you guys think that writing and drawing for all of these books kind of differs from writing or drawings? You know, Caleb, you, know, you do both. Um, sure, for a grown-up series. So that, that's actually a very good question. And the truth is, process-wise, for me, there really isn't much difference. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I think, the, the, to me, the big difference is really the container. With Ice Age, each issue is self-contained. Uh, we don't want to make a, a five-year-old have to track down six issues at various local comic book shops mm -hmm. in, or, or in order to complete a story. So everything is self-contained, and I get to tell the kind of jokes that I really love, <laughs> which are terrible. <laughs> you just like, uh, you know, the kind of jokes where you tell to people who think they're cool and sophisticated, mm -hmm. and they don't think they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get back out of that stage mm -hmm. and uh, they're funny again. Um, those are my favorite kind of jokes. Mm -hmm. And um, and also there's more room in all ages comics, I think, for humor. It's funny because in, in, in movies, there's such a huge emphasis on humor and making people laugh. Mm -hmm. But in comics, so many people take their comics deadly oh, serious. Yeah. And they don't want too much funny, you know? And I'm, I'm not sure if I can ever get enough funny. And so <laughs> um, these all ages comics really just give me an outlet to write the other kind of comics that I love. And I think humor is, is something that allows different ages to enjoy something. It's something that someone of two completely different ages can laugh at the same joke mm -hmm. and it somehow bonds them together. Mm -hmm. I think a good example, or a good explanation of what all ages is is it's, it's shareable, whereas maybe the older comics aren't as shareable with all ages. Mm -hmm. All ages books can go the other way and can be shared with anybody. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's safe or whether it's nice or whether it's got that drama or humor, it's at a level that I can share it with anybody in here at any mm -hmm. moment. And to me, that's, that's always what I've seen them as. I like that. I like that. Um, what, uh, what's your favorite thing about doing an all ages title? You know, what's your favorite part? It, and each of you can kind of <laughs> give your own little perspective, nugget. I think for me, it's the, I find like, especially with, with Adventure Time, Bravest Warriors, <gasps> and, and actually a lot of this stuff, it's like there's a lot of unbridled imagination. Um, and it's really nice to see that in comics. Yeah. You know, in any comics. And, and there's, there are some, you know, people doing kind of like older books. Uh, that, that skew older that, that are kind of working in that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time they try to ground like, s like books that are, should be fantastical, mm -hmm. superhero stuff. Mm -hmm. and they try to ground it too much and I think it really kind of handicaps the imagination when you try to do that. You're trying to over explain things and, and I think just having, having a, a, a canvas where you can really go nuts. Well, like anything. Verbally, anything visually happen. and just and, and just kind of show off where the weird places your mind can go, <laughs> you know? You can be a lot more creative. You yeah, can, oh you, can, yeah. you can offer a lot more. There's, there's you know, stories of, of working in, in movies and at film studios where we would pitch stuff, and in the room, everybody goes, ha, 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 that would be great. No, we <laughs> <laughs> And in this arena, you have that ability to be able to go, I can be as creative as I want, and I can offer that out there, and I'm not hindered by that. There's so much imagination that goes into yeah. it. And, and I think that's the best part is then getting the feedback from you guys, which is that you're responding to it. You know, it matters to you as well, you know, and from all, all ages, you know. 
I know for me, getting letters from parents, from kids, from students, from everywhere, it, it validates a lot of that, that whole arena, you know? For, for me, the favorite part, I have extremely fond memories of my first comics when I was a kid. The first ones that I had that I picked out on my own, I would read and reread and reread and it had some sort of permanent effect on my brain because um, I'm still doing comics now. <laughs> but I just, those, as a kid, those stories just meant so much to me and I just loved them. And my favorite thing is the potential, I mean, I'm not the audience, so I can't tell if it's happening, but the potential to have created something that has that same effect on someone else, and maybe 20 years from now, they'll be writing comics. Yeah. I think that's one of my favorite things about that. Uh, what about you, Matt? His favorite thing about comics? Uh -huh. Favorite thing about making all ages comics? This is the first comic I've done, so I'm, I'm learning a lot about it. Uh, my favorite thing is when I I put something in and it seems completely innocent and I thought it was and then I'll it'll get back notes and it, it'll it'll be like oh we have to change this <laughs> and I just sit and I'm like but why and then I think about it and I go oh <laughs> oh, no. oh no oh I'm so gross I had no idea <laughs> but I, I kind of it always kind of pains me to take out those jokes because I think those jokes are always you know they are a joke a kid would make and appreciate. You know, you always you have these like little jokes, and I'm like, it's a God. playground joke. Yeah, it's a playground it's one joke. Of those jokes and that we know we've heard and told as kids. And it and it pains me <laughs> always to be like, oh man, <laughs> we have to take out that reference to butts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which that's that's one yeah. that we can. We Never can underestimate the guys. power of like body function. Yeah. Jokes. yeah. <laughs> those are some powerful jokes. There was uh, something that we we tweaked a little bit in the first issue um, where. Fiona, where, where Fiona was holding the flame prince after he had been kind of drained of his flaminess by the ice queen and Fiona had rescued him. And she was laying there and she's like, whoa. And I'm looking at him, you know, I'm just in awe and it was this beautiful moment. And then Kate goes, Fiona, you better not be touching that guy's butt. <laughs> and Fiona goes, ah. And the, the issue ends. And they weren't sure about the butt touching, so. Which was it was just kind of a shame because it's a really cute. I thought it was really cute, you know. Yeah, it seemed kind of like innocent. Yeah, that, it seemed kind of yeah. innocent, you know, and, and I was I was a little sad that that had to go. But, <sighs> um, so how did how did you guys, um, you know, Caleb mentioned, you know, kind of your first comic. Um, I'm gonna ask this last question and then uh, I'll open the floor to our our lovely fireside chat group that we have here for questions. Um, but. Uh, what kind of is your favorite all ages title besides the ones you work on <laughs> that you would love to kind of put out there in the world and say, please read this. It's super great. And it can be a newspaper comic, it can be a comic book, um, whatever you feel. <laughs> comic strip or comic book? Or it just can be, it can be that? either. Um, comic strip or comic book. Something that this it's crowd should get out and read. It's hard to choose. I know. I'm gonna play it safe. And, uh, and say, um, I know it's only a six issue mini, but Fiona and Kate, <laughs> dude, <laughs> holy. <laughs> it's beautiful and hilarious. And Britt Wilson doing the letters on that yeah, thing. Great. It's just that was really, like, it all whew. comes together so nicely. Um, so buy Fiona and Kate uh, yes. from Boom Studio. <laughs> uh, but it, it's funny, like, there's a, there, there's, I, I teach workshops in mm -hmm. schools, and there's very few things that kids don't already know about. Like, I mostly, I don't have anything to recommend to them. I'm just like, what do you guys think I should be reading? <laughs> awesome. Um, I really like, I, I know it's like, Calvin and Hobbes had a 10-year run from 85 to 95, and there's no, uh, it's not in any newspapers anymore, mm -hmm. but you'd be hard-pressed to find a kid any age that doesn't know about that mm -hmm. comic and love it to death. And mm -hmm. I think that's an incredible uh, testament to the staying power of Bill Watterson's imagination. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think somebody, somebody described it once as the greatest 10 year work of art ever created. And mm -hmm. I think like that, I would totally. Um, <laughs> so I don't, it's like I, I don't need to recommend Calvin and Hobbes to people. <laughs> it's, you know, it's every like collective unconscious, but um, I kind of love that. that I think there's, like that. there are those standards. There yeah. are those, there are those, those sort of, um, you gotta know these. You gotta like these. You know, mm -hmm. the peanuts, the Calvin and Hobbes, bone, bone, bone yeah, bone. 
Cool. Um, and I'll even throw out Leave It to Chance. Um, mm -hmm. Leave It to Chance was a wonderful book that yeah. James Robertson wrote. And definitely hit that all ages genre very well. It played very well with great drama and great accessibility. Awesome. Caleb, any other? Well, if you asked me a couple weeks ago, I would have said Peanut. <laughs> so that's kind of. Peanuts is right at the top. Peanut, yeah. Um, slightly intimidating because of that. But I would, I'm, as far as all ages stuff goes, I'm a big fan of Reed Gunther mm -hmm. uh, from Image Comics yeah, by Chris and Shane Houghton. It's about a bear riding cowboy. It's an incredibly sweet book. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Um, Matt, do you have any recommendations, any favorites of yours? My favorite is Garfield. Yes. <laughs> like, so there's some other ones I used to read when I was younger, like um, What's Michael? Oh, it's yeah. It's like the Japanese mm -hmm. Garfield. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. It's just as good as Garfield. <laughs> uh, and then um, there's a new one called Polar Bear Cafe. Oh, that's yeah. really cute. I I've, I've Polar heard Bear that's Bear great. I yeah, it's so it sweet. Out. And I just like really cute, nice, sweet <laughs> things. And there's lots of that out there. Thank goodness, all ages comics. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness for you. Um, and now the floor is yours, everyone. Uh, you can just. Are give we going to make them go stand in front of oh, that microphone? Certainly not. <laughs> We're a family now. Uh, but yeah, if, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know how we how we got into this gig or uh, anything about all ages comics in general, please put your hands up. Yes. Oh Pogo. Yeah. Pogo's yeah. great. And I, thank oh, goodness, Kelly's like. Huge, huge oh. Well, it's like, it's like when you listen to a band. It's like, you know, when I listened to Nirvana, and then he said he was, uh, he, he was like, listen to the Pixies and Shown a Knife. And I was like, okay, I have to listen to those bands yeah. now. Pogo is a comic strip that all of my favorite cartoonists yeah. read and loved. And so it's great to kind of trace the lineage back and, and read like things like Crazy Cat and Pogo mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that, that influenced everybody else. And go, oh, yeah, that's what this is. Little Nemo. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, Pogo is coming out now from Fan Fantagraphics in really beautiful editions. You should all check it out. Um, you can kind of see the genesis, like you said, of, of every comic that you love <laughs> in those. Um, good, good question. Um, so Braves Warriors is a, uh, on t it is on TV, but it's on web TV. Um, it's on, uh, it's on YouTube, on Cartoon Hangover, which is a YouTube cartoon channel, essentially, that uh, Fred Arater, who produces Adventure Time and uh, Brave Warriors, uh, is kind of putting together. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of on TV, just, just new TV. Go for it. Well, I mean, because we don't, obviously. We're comic artists. <laughs> like, we're not. We're not necessarily animating. But I work. Um, you know, a lot of the books that Kaboom does works a lot with uh, people who might consider themselves web comicers. So, uh, kind of online personalities as far as uh, comics go, and and they uh, they have been an incredible asset. And I I would have to say on that, and I I point to Natasha on this. Fiona and Cake would not be here yep. if not for her, her inspiration and her Absolutely. wanting to see something exist. Mm -hmm. So if you have ideas for stuff and you want to see something, follow that creativity. Follow it out there to it. See if you can make, see how you can draw attention to what inspires you and what you want to see. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, look, look what has come from her creativity and her inspiration. Mm -hmm. And you're not, I think that it's a, it's a, things have changed so much, you know, in the past decade or so, you're not limited by geography anymore. There is accessibility. Oh so man! Easily well, that's just there. it. Like both both myself and Natasha, uh, we uh, we got noticed because we put our stuff online. Yeah. yeah. And um, and there are, there are so many different venues for getting your stuff seen by people. Um, it's it's ridiculous. Like you you don't have an excuse to not put yeah. your stuff up there and share it with everybody. Um, it's just, you don't have to leave your house. You should leave your house sometimes, <laughs> but. <laughs> so you can um, get inspiration for more things to drop out, basically. Yeah. Sunlight is good occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you have a window, so you don't need to leave. Then you're fine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Then you're fine. Don't leave your house. Yes.
I thought Wankerson became one with yeah, the universe. Yeah, I think that. Was that was, that's it's always been Wankerson. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that's what I kind of assumed happened, unless, unless Wankerson just kind of like made New Mars yeah. uh, king. <laughs> just that planet, but I think, I, I, I just assumed like he just kept expanding and expanding. <laughs> And uh, and so everything's Wankershin so now. Yeah, so that's it's a just, good that's, that's just a the good question. These are the philosophical <laughs> questions that we want to answer. You should uh, you kids should, comics uh, are do deep. a little little comic about it. Yeah, it would be it might be kind of fun. But yeah, I, I okay, yeah I definitely watch that show <laughs> just because I need to for my work, but also because it's so good. It's so it's good. Everything like Breen Burns, who's the the uh, the showrunner, the guy who writes and directs and does a lot of the voices for it. He's it's so good and just so out of left field. And I think, again, Joey really matches that beat for beat with his yeah. scripts. He, he really just captures the weird insanity of that show. You guys were kind of a ma like a perfect match, a match made in heaven <laughs> well, for that the, series. Yeah. Like, <laughs> thank you. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, but because uh, when we started doing the comic, um, the show hadn't premiered yet. Our comic premiered before the show, and all we had were some animatics and like, <laughs> and lots of lots of drawings. And Brian going, "Okay, so here's the show." And I think the the line that that made me choose Joey a little bit after I watched a couple of animatics was Brian was like, "It's just Dawson's Creek in space with superheroes and feelings." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay, I know just the guy." <laughs> and uh, so that, uh, that's how that, that kind of happened. Like Dawson Creek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Yes, Mindy. Did you guys learn from the comic book? A little bit. Um, it's pretty huge. Like, I, I think I got into it too late. Um, that's because I, but I love Andrew. Like, I love Andrew's sense of humor and his, you know, he's a great guy. It's just like, Every time I try to start reading it, it, it feels so daunting. <laughs> um, Homestuck, for those of you who don't know, um, is this very expansive web. I don't even want to call it a comic. It's like this, this incredible art project, <laughs> this narrative art project that is one of those. Um, it and Emily Carroll's work, if you guys read Emily Carroll's, um, she does these kind of creepy comics that just utilize the medium really, really well. Um, uh, Andrew does that as well, where it is it is a it is a comic that almost couldn't exist anywhere but the web. It is it is perfect for where it is shown, essentially. So check it out uh, if you have a week and uh, you just want to read straight through it. I recommend it. So um, you and then you go, and then you. <laughs> OTPs. Do you guys know what that is? <laughs> An OTP is an original true parody. I don't know that we are all in like fandom enough to. I have a King of the Hill OTP. Huh? King of the Hill OTP is Bill and Lauma. And then I have a Jersey Shore OTP. <laughs> nice. Which is Snooky and Vinny. Very nice. Yeah. I like it. That's good. That's a good way to go. What was I thinking about the other day? Go, go for it. Uh, this is actually my first exposure to the term, so I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of a troll. I just I I like live in a dark hole <laughs> and write. And if I'm at my if I'm at my computer, I feel guilty if I'm not writing. So mm -hmm. I I don't get exposed to much culture, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> uh, no, somebody yeah. somebody called Joey and I the OTP. Yeah, they are. Oh, I did. Yeah. That, they're my OTP. Yeah. Uh, Mike and Mike and Joey are my OTP. I always I I when uh, Mike and Joey talk on Twitter or when Mike and Zach Sterling talk on Twitter. <laughs> They're just the greatest. I love reading their conversations and Mike accused me of trying to marry him off. And I'm I told him. Ready, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, uh, <laughs> I told him that I wasn't getting any younger. And what about grandchildren, Mike? <laughs> so. <laughs> um, little beards. Yes. Uh, uh, me? Yeah. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> um, I uh, I don't necessarily play for your team, so. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, though I'm sure you're a very nice fellow. <laughs> um, you, buddy, I I love your do your. You had a question, and I would really like to hear it. Uh, oh, you didn't? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you haven't asked one yet, and then we'll yes. Sure. Um, 
it, Joey loves her. Yeah, Joey loves Joey Clem. Joey absolutely loves her. And I love Clem, so. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> well, they gave us this cast, and uh, we've just had a really, really great time playing with them. <laughs> so, um, yes. Fourth one is the question fourth is, one. will there be a Fiona and Kate comic that talks more about Lumpy Space Prince? Oh, <laughs> and the fourth one's all about Lumpy Space Prince. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be the whole issue. It's going to be all about Lumpy There's, Space Prince. Um, actually, since this is kind of a, a little group, I'm going to show you guys. I think I have sneak. a sneak peeky, peeky peek. Um, let's see if we can. I'm trying to find my Emerald City folder. Ah, here we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to... What's that other folder? <laughs> There's all kinds of folders. <laughs> it's like... Photos Cancun? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, and so this is just... These are just raw files, but I did bring this just in case, essentially. So hold on. It's opening a couple times. There we go. So this is the fourth issue cover of Fiona and Cake. <laughs> Which <laughs> I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> it's going to be uh, we, our designer um, in the Boom Office. Stephanie loves, 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 loves kind of the the magical girl genre and anime. And when this cover came in, she printed it out gigantic, huge, and hung it on her <laughs> wall of our design office. So if you were in the office, Nat, you're going to see it. She's really excited about it. She saw it and she she screamed and ran out of the room. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what's wrong with Stephanie? And I went into the design office like 10 minutes later and it was printing out on our big like pro grade printer in this huge <laughs> print. I was like, oh, okay. That's, that's what that is. <laughs> No, no. Uh, at the that question point is whether the cat bug is really <laughs> part zebra. That's great. Very important. Um, no, <laughs> at that point, Danny, who's a really smart dude, and he's, he's an he's, inventor. He's an inventor. Uh, really had lost cool. his brain, and so he was just saying, like, nothing he's saying is making any sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. which sometimes, you know, you'd get up too early in the morning, you yeah. feel a little. Oh, this morning, I felt, I felt just like, I felt just like exactly. Danny. And you just, you know, you got to mop your face a little bit. That's and right. Up. And, you f and, and you go and you do panels like this and you get to talk to delightful people like this and it comes all back. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, that came to me just because uh, we wanted to do more Adventure Time stuff. And uh, they have been really cool about kind of giving us the freedom to come up with weird miniseries. Obviously, we wanted to do Fiona and Cake like immediately. We were like, we love Fiona and Cake. We want to do Fiona and Cake. And the time wasn't right. Um, so they were like, come up with something else. And I uh, was talking to another senior editor at Boom, Daphna, um, who is my office mate. Um, and uh, we we're talking and I was like, I really want to have like a journey of self-discovery, like a rock and roll journey of self-discovery, like two ladies, two bros, two lady bros, Peebs and, Peebs and Marcy going on a, a rock and roll. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be this really, really cool thing, you know, like a Riot Girl rock and roll explosion. And I was like, it'd be like the Spice Girls movie. And that's where <laughs> Marceline Scream Queens came from. Was I, I gave that. You'd be surprised how many of our oh books yeah. are inspired by a Spice Girls movie. <laughs> All ages comics. Just watch the Spice Girls movie. <laughs> You'll be fine. And uh, so, you know, I, I basically gave that jumble of words to Meredith, and she made it into a real thing. Um, where's Diddy again? Um, she made it into a real thing. And, uh, you know, Fiona and Cake obviously has just been Nat's uh, beautiful vision that <laughs> we've been blessed enough to publish. Um, and kind of what's coming next, and nobody really knows this yet, um, but I will, I guess, kind of talk a little bit about it, give you a little tease. So there was this story in uh, Marceline and the Scream Queens number four that was uh, 
peppermint butler and cinnamon bun like shaken somebody down, like shaken various candy citizens down like mobsters. <laughs> and I loved that. I loved it so much. And uh, so if, uh, if there's such a thing as like Uian crime like sitcom, that's what the next mini series is going to be. <laughs> um, starring those two mooks, essentially making things happen. <laughs> so uh, details are still being worked out, but uh, that'll be announced in Jul uh, July, so, uh, or for July, so I guess in the next couple of months. So keep your eyes open. Uh, you can see more details. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> um, yes? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, we all are really, really passionate about what we do and passionate about our comics and, and stuff. So sometimes it's, it's something that, you know, somebody comes to us and says, you know, and they're a pal or somebody that we know and they're like, I've got this idea. And we say, oh, maybe the time's not right for it. Or we say, oh my gosh, like that's a really, really good idea. Um, let's, Let's, let's move forward with that. You know, somebody like Mike uh, is somebody that his work, is, we, we loved it. We loved it, loved it, loved it. And, you know, and Mike was looking for kind of a place, a new home for Hero Bear. And, and it was just kind of serendipitous. And that's, you know, that's how he came to the family. And Bravest Warriors was a situation where, you know, Fred, who runs Frederator, Fred Siebert, who is an incredible person if you ever have the opportunity to meet him, you should Wikipedia him now. He is an incredible person. He has the firmest handshake I've ever seen <laughs> in a man, ever felt. Um, he liked what we had been doing with Adventure Time, and he was like, we've got this weird series coming called Bears Warriors. <laughs> Would that be something you're interested in? And we watched some animatics, and we were like, yes. Yep, mm-hmm, yeah, yes, please. Um, so it, it kind of is chance, you know, I'll, I'll run into someone on, a flo on the floor and at their work and I'll be like, wow, I have to work with you. You're the best. Um, and then I find something for them. So, uh, you know, and sometimes they reach out to me. So it just kind of, it, it's all, you know, obviously our taste and what feels right, you know, for Kaboom. Uh, what feels like it, you know, who's going who's gonna to be a, a, good, a good companion at the dinner table, if you will. <laughs> so I think we have time for like one more and then Anybody? Yeah, you had your hand up. No more? Oh, my goodness. Well, maybe, oh, okay, one last one. Yes, I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> good, we're good, all right. <laughs> uh, they, I mean, they're best friends, if that's what you mean. They're best pals. Uh, they have, they have boys' night with Fiona all the time. They, they have. They can be whatever you want them to be in your imagination. That's right. Um, oh, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want. There is a the there's a great panel in this latest issue where uh, there's there's boys' night T-shirts and they're pretty pretty much my favorite panel. <laughs> boys' night. <laughs> um, so in any case. I hope you guys had a nice time. I know it was kind of a, a small group, but we really enjoyed spending time with you this morning. And uh, I hope you check out some of Kaboom's All Ages comics and just All Ages comics in general, I hope. Uh, you can come on by the Kaboom booth at 2102. I'm not. 2002 two two for zero Kaboom zero and 2102 two for yeah. Boom. For Boom. And, uh, they're very large and next to each yeah, other. They're right, they're right at the front. <laughs> So uh, please come by, flip through books. We are not the kind of booth that doesn't let you sit and, and read for a spell. And we're um, all there, so you can, yeah. you can grill us further. You can harass us all. <laughs> please come by. So please, please do come by. Um, in any case, thank you very much. We are honored and humbled that you keep reading our books. So.